All right, everybody. Um, this is Stephanie Kobe here at our Kobe um, family farm house. And I'm doing a little mini series before Halloween of haunted going on. So now I'm, I just did a, a, the same conversation with everybody, but for some reason the camera doesn't re didn't record it. So I have to, I'm going to do it again, but that's odd in itself. Okay. So as um, some of you may know of our house is um, quite old. Um, probably um, built back in 1889 or so, 1900s. We have this cute little property, cute little park-like setting. But there's lots of strange going-ons at this house here in Fife Lake. Um, and we can't explain it. Some are downright spooky and kooky, and others are just simply unexplainable. And this one is an unexplainable story. Um, some people know that my husband, Michael, is a builder, and, but he, he is away at work a lot, but... Um, He's been home lately, and he's been working on this house. And he's been having a battle with squirrels and chipmunks. They're in the heat ducts in the basement. They're in the rafters. They're in the floors. <laughs> Probably never ever sell our house now that I've said this. And in the walls. And so he's been on this, um, like, Caddyshack uh, gopher battle with these things every day. And he's, he's making headway. I can tell by all the black walnuts and the acorns in the lawns. They're not being stored in our house right now. But... So here's the story. This is a kooky going on, and we're going to get into this right now. Um, and I'm going to show you. This here is going to help explain a little bit of the story. Um, if you look up into this hole here, uh, Mike was trying to see where the squirrels were getting in. And he, he had <clears throat> made a hole over on this side from the walkway so he could see what was going in, on in this um, little office ceiling. Because the ceiling is crap right now. Because over the years, it has some shingle failures and ice sheeting failures he's going to have to redo just from age and stuff so he's been working on that but when he opened these areas up um the he had put had to put this particle board in here because our bedroom's on the other side and there was exposed two by fours long story short once he repacked all the insulation and made sure that it was um warm and put the particle board up there before he did that there was uh white paint on the two by fours. And I'm like, I was getting, uh, I was asking him what was that all about? And he um, proceeded to explain that it was, he believes from fire damage, which we know the house had caught on fire um, probably back in the seventies or eighties. Um, and I thought that was more up in the upstairs bedroom area um, in the rafters. Uh, it very well could have been a little bit more down in the office, but the funny part of the story is, is that our house um, he, it, he, he has seen a couple other areas like in the basement and the other side of the house that have also tried to catch on fire. They're older fires from a long time ago, um, older wood and so forth, not with part of the new updates and things. Um, I'm like, oh, so we started talking more about that fact that the house has tried to catch itself on fire. <gasps> oh, scary. Uh, and I, the proof of that is that with the one maybe connected fire, from those two different areas and then uh, one in the basement and maybe one on the other side. We'll just count all that up as two different house fires from different eras. When we've been living in the house, the house has also tried to catch on fire two additional times. Old wiring um, in the girl's bedroom caught on fire one night and then a lamp in the other side of the house um, came unattached, fell down and tried to catch uh, insulation on fire over there. We've caught them just as they're about ready to combust. Um, and then in addition, if you look out here, you can see we have these really cute little buildings. And one of them is a chicken coop, these little red buildings here. And the chicken coop tried to catch on fire. Um, the heat lamp fell to the ground and um, smoldered the sawdust all day long t to the point that it almost started to combust. Now, human error? Yes, probably. But why? I mean, we're pretty diligent and safe with our children. We're pretty diligent and safe with our animals. Um so about five near misses of this house trying to catch, its, catch itself on fire is a little odd. And um, those of you um, who live in the Fife Lake area, such as we do, uh, may know of our house, may know of its history and in the going-ons. We have, uh, uh, by the way, we live near, the, near Traverse City in the Mitt, uh, up at the top. Um, we also have Dogman here, in case you're interested. And that could be a story for another day. But a caretaker of a previous resident... Um, said also our occupant said that um, he had been experiencing she had conveyed to me that he experienced um, odd going ons and he would tell them and she just thought that was you know just his mind leaving him a little bit um, but when I shared with her the same incidents I said oh our cabinets used to open and close all the time 
and doors would swing open um, unexpectedly. And she said that he had complained of the same exact thing going on in this house. Um, and she just wrote it off. But anyways, that's, that's a little odd. Um, and I guess there's other stories that he may have said and other people know things that are a little odd. Our house, besides trying to catch itself on fire for five times, also um, in the front lawn here, I'll just walk out here so you can see how cute our house is and, and that it does not scare us, though it does scare other people. Um, a young man passed away in our front lawn hitting one of those, those big trees out there. A farmer um, got smashed by a rock in one of the fields out back. There's um, been two young children that I know of in the early years that have passed away. And then along with all the other um, elderly people who may have succumbed to age in this house. So that is a lot of going in our house. Um, people, people would find that interesting, I think, if they sat down and thought about it, try to catch yourself on fire five times, had at least five people pass away here on our property. Um, to us, it isn't scary. It's park-like and beautiful, and we love our house. It's warm and cozy and inviting. When I tell people all of the stories and the going-ons, um, they get a little weirded out. Some people won't even come to our house because of they say the energy that's in it. Um, I, I don't mind the energy in it. I've never had anything scare me, per se. Um, but those are plenty of stories of going-ons and encounters that I have had, and other people have had, not just me, so not crazy. Um, but anyway, so that is our story of the day. Why does our house try to keep catching itself on fire? But I encourage other people to um, get on. If you've enjoyed this story, um, try to like it so that I don't feel silly making these little um, videos. Let me know that that I should do it and you guys find this stuff interesting. If not, I'll, I won't bother you anymore. But like it. And if you have a comment of my house is haunted or I know your house is haunted or you have a story you want to share with me, uh, message me of my house here in Fife Lake. Um, and we can be entertaining during these um, trying times. But I hope you uh, enjoyed this and get on yourself. Make some stories. Contact me if you have some spooky stories. Write in the comments if you uh, have had a spooky incident with my house. Um, but we'll go on. This was number two. Um, great balls of fire, we'll call it, I guess. Or great halls of fire. And then um, we'll go and do another one in a couple days of another story right before Halloween. Leaning up to Halloween. And then hopefully our grand finale will be my Beetlejuice uh, display in the front yard. But um, I will talk to you later. Thanks for listening. Thank <laughs> you.